Good evening, everybody. Uh, kids are in bed, and I haven't seen the draw yet. It has been taking place um, three hours ago. And I thought before I look at it, I'll start this video and share my immediate reaction with you guys. Um, and yeah, you tell me what you think. You get my direct thoughts. I pull it right up on the phone here. Let's see. Just a sec. Bear with me. So we have Group A, um, Atletico Madrid, Dortmund, Monaco and Club Brugge. Interesting. Uh, still think that Atletico will win this easily, uh, but between Dortmund and Monaco that could be a tight one. I unfortunately Club Brugge, I think it's gonna be a tough one. The next one, Group B, yeah, Barcelona, Tottenham, PSV and Inter. That seems to be right, right off the bat, one of the toughest groups, in my opinion. Uh, I think Barcelona, of course, goes should go through easily, but Tottenham, PSV and Inter, that could be a tight one. Uh, not an easy draw for Barcelona at all, and not a straightforward group. I even think that PSV has a chance here of uh, advancing, although Tottenham had a good showing last uh, year, so yeah, Inter... It remains to be seen, but yeah, uh, the group that got into and fourth was always going to be among the toughest ones. Then we have Group C, uh, Paris Saint-Germain, Napoli, Liverpool, Cervena, Svesta. Another really tough group. Uh, again, I don't want to um, hit on Cervena, Svesta. Uh, if the morning, if you if you watch the video in the morning and you got the feeling that I don't think that Cervena, Svesta is a good game team. Uh, I didn't mean to say that it's just in comparison to other teams that Salzburg played earlier in the Europa League that they are not uh, that big name, of course, uh, historically. They are a European Cup winner, I think the last one before the, it was called the Champions League and I remember that one very fondly. So it was actually a great uh, team. Rozinecki, I remember Panchev, Belodedic really great team and the semi-final against Bayern Munich was probably one of the best European Cup ties ever. But in this group with Paris, Paris, Paris Saint-Germain, Napoli and Liverpool, uh, they rank outsiders. Um, I'm also afraid that Napoli will not make, uh, will be lucky to get a third sp uh, sp I mean, spot here. I don't see Napoli going being ahead of Liverpool or Paris, uh, which is sad but uh, the reality. So, so far the Italian teams, if you want to look at that perspective, and yeah, you know I like Serie A, so I always will look at it a little bit from an Italian perspective, they got a tough draw. Group D, Lok Mosca, Porto, Schalke, Galatasaray. That's a bit of a group. Uh, yes, I think everyone will be happy to be in this group and everyone can at once. Uh, I actually would say Porto and Schalke probably, also Gal Galatasaray and Lok also have chances. I cannot say anything about Lok Moscow, honestly, I don't know. I mean, they are seated in the top spot because they were Russian champions. And that's the issue with um, UEFA seedings. Uh, sometimes they use smart seeding procedures where they rank uh, how they are by strength. But because everything is so even, seeding doesn't make much sense in the UEFA. That's why I think the uh, what's coming out of the Nations League for national teams is a smart thing. But in Champions League, Yes, you want to give the champions a little bit of an advantage, but that might be a little bit too much. Uh, overall, of the four groups that I've seen so far, this is the weakest one. I think all the other groups, there are at least three teams that can battle for the top two spots, which actually is quite interesting. Uh, that's something I've been missing of late. Um, maybe the reform is not that bad. Maybe we get more even groups now. And yeah, if you ask me, it's Porto and Schalke. Uh, don't want to discard Galatasaray and Lok Moscow. But I would even say the Lok Moscow, again, I don't know too much, but probably if I go by name, they're probably the weakest team in here, uh, although they're top seeded. But you know, I might be completely off here, so I, I don't mean this as a diss on Lok Moscow. It just uh, feels to me that Porto and Schalke should be the stronger teams. Group E, oh, this is an interesting one. Bayern Munich, Benfica, Ajax and Ajax. Um, oh. Bayern should make this easy, although I think Bayern is going a little bit down, but this is also 
if I compare it to the other three, it's not as strong. Ajax and Befica probably will battle it out for second spot and never discard Ike Athens. So, um, yeah, that's definitely an interesting one. Um, but yeah, I think it's Ajax and Befica for second spot. What I like in this group is that we have three uh, former winners and big name teams. Benfica former, win former winners, then Ajax uh, five-time winners, and Bayern I think four times so far. Five times also. Yeah, Ajax has only four. That's yeah. Bayern five, Ajax four, Benfica two, and I think five finals losses, something like that. I talked about the curse of Benfica earlier. And I only talk about the European Cup uh, slash Champions League. Group F, Man City, Schachter, Donetsk, Lyon and Hoffenheim. Oh, Man City will be happy about this group. Um, curious to see Schachter, Donetsk. Uh, I probably would put them on par with Lyon, Hoffenheim. I don't expect much from them. Uh, this is, it's not only the name, it's just, I don't think that um, the German league is that strong and that squad uh, lives off the coach, doesn't it? Yeah. They are for me the clear uh, cut favorite to finish last here. Manchester uh, City should finish first and then the other two battle it out for second place. Also, not that great of a group overall. Yeah, and then the Roma. Uh, Real Madrid, Roma, Jessica, and Pilsen. Um, I think Jessica and Pilsen are sleeper teams in this group. Of course, it's Real Madrid and Roma that will be favored here. But I think the other two are sleeper teams. Um, I would expect Real Madrid to make it through easily, probably even after four games. Um, and Roma still prevailing, but having some trouble, especially with uh, Jessica. But also Pilsen, I would never discount. They can cause some trouble. And then we're at the last group, and that's also a very interesting one. Juve, Man United, Valencia, and Young Boys. Uh, it's not a straightforward draw. Uh, again, Juve should be favored here, uh, but Man United, they have to squat, and Pogba, former Juve player, <laughs> now faces Juve, that's interesting. Uh, I wasn't very impressed by Valencia this weekend, so I was, uh, <laughs> although <laughs> who is impressed by Man United at the moment, uh, they have a great uh, quality name squad, but I think there's so much unrest brewing there uh, that that might put them past or uh, behind Valencia, but yeah. So if I think about that, uh, Juve should win that group. Probably not as not comfortably, but you know, could be even with a game to go that they win this. Um, Valencia and then, yeah, young boys. As I said, that's probably <laughs> uh, from my personal perspective, coming from Linz, the favorite team here. Although not really, I think Roma is uh, my favorite team, but yeah, always support young boys as well. But yeah, that's a tough group, but it's, it has at least nice names. But when I go by names, former winners, Group E with Bayern is good, but I think the two big groups of B and C, Paris, Napoli, Liverpool, Germany, West Ham, Barcelona, Tottenham, PSV, and Inter Nationale. And also Group A doesn't look bad. Now, another thought that I had today, and I'll end it with this thought, uh, is the final will be played in Madrid. Can we see a rematch? You know what I'm talking about. 2014-2016. Atletico Madrid against Real Madrid. This time it will be played in Atletico's home stadium and maybe finally Atletico Madrid to win it. On the other side, I don't want to see Real Madrid in another final. Really, really, really not. But yeah, maybe that's additional motivation. We didn't have it in a long time. That the Champions League final is played in a stadium of one of the favorites. Uh, I wouldn't call Atletico Madrid among the top favorites, but at the second tier, I think Atletico Madrid fits very well in there. Well, let me know what you thought about these groups. I actually think those groups are more exciting than they have been for a few years. I think when letting in, although I really don't like it, but letting in those bigger name teams makes for more interesting groups. The one last thing I would like to say is that probably they should drop the splitting up by country. Uh, I don't really see a reason for it. I think it makes the draw procedure unnecessarily complicated. And, you know, you have multiple countries in there, a mix, allow them to play each other. I don't understand it at the World Cup quite either. Uh, no, I understand it that you want to have some mix of it. Um, but here, I think it would... I wouldn't mind having two Spanish teams in one group or two English teams meeting in another group. Um, but yeah, maybe... 
maybe in a group stage I'm still kind of okay with it, but then starting local stage, I think they should allow that uh, it's not, there are no restrictions by the country you're coming from. Well, let me know what you thought about the champions groups. Which groups are you most excited about? I think group B and group C I might watch and they are of course all parallel games, so that will be interesting. Uh, the group stage it got more exciting, that's for sure. Well, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know who you think are the favorites uh, in each group and uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. <laughs> Good night. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.